All right, so today what we're going to do is we're going to build uh, a watch complication for watchOS. Now, what's a complication? It's essentially a little widget that goes on your watch face that'll give you direct data access to some specific piece of information, typically from an app. So in our last app, we built a watch app that tied into the iPhone itself. This week, we're going to take a bit of a different approach and just have a, a uh, focus purely on the watch complication. So we don't really need to focus too heavily on the iPhone. So we're going to make something, uh, so we're just going to make an app that focuses purely on complications. But to show you how you can configure and see what the complication we're going to build, I actually decided to take the step back and start at a very basic watch face and show you how to configure your watch to show a different watch face and also a particular complication that you're looking at. So first thing to do is on your iPhone simulator or just on your iPhone device itself is to open up the watch app and look at the different faces that you have. And so by default, we have this particular activity analog. And if I swipe over, I'm going to look for the modular one because I'm going to build a complication that will fit the modular face. So I'm going to click on modular there. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set it as my current watch face. Take a moment and it'll switch over. Now, each little component here is called a complication. So this is a complication, this one, this one, and in particular, this weather one's a complication as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to switch this weather complication to be our the final product of what we're going to build today uh, for our watch face. And that is our, uh, our special uh, conference scheduler app that we built last time around for the watch. We're going to take just a piece of it and make it into a complication here. So. Starting with configuring complications, which you see here, um, I'm going to con configure the middle one, which is actually this guy. And by clicking on weather, I'm going to choose a different complication. You can see there's a bunch here. And I have mine. It's called W10 Watch Complication. And if I give it a moment, it'll switch. And so now we have showing that Jim Kirk is presenting something called Far and Away, a presentation called Far and Away at 333. So we're going to say file new project or just basically create a new Xcode project, right? And we'll come up with the project we have at the back. And we're going to continue on with what we had last time around, which was we're going to say watchOS, iOS app with WatchKit app. Now, we're not going to do anything for the iOS app for this particular application because we don't need to. But in the future, you, uh, in your own personal op applications, you probably would. So I'm going to hit next and I'm going to give it a home. Now for this, one thing to note is I'm going to include a complication. I'm going to include a complication here. And I'll hit next. All right, and let's look at what's at our disposal here. We have here not just our, only our iOS app, but we also have our WatchKit app option, and we have our WatchKit extension option. And so the extension is what we're looking at here. All right, we have our extension, we have our WatchKit app. All right, so the thing we're going to do first is we're going to create our storyboard. And we're not going to focus on the iPhone app at all. We're just focus on the storyboard for the watch. So we're going to create a, uh, a little scheduler app here. We're going to create a mini one similar to what we did last time around. But instead of using watch connectivity to transfer data from the iPhone, we're just going to go straight into hard coding data on this end. So first thing we're going to do is we have here our interface controller and what we're going to do is we're going to add a little table even before that maybe we'll add a little label just to say schedule just to be thorough and let's put the word schedule so let's just be our home page we're not going to go with sub pages like last time around we'll just our effort here is on the complication itself and then we'll add a table. All right, and we have our table row. And so what we're going to do here is add in a group. All 
right? And then within the group, actually to configure the group first of all, we're going to say the layout is vertical because we're going to have items above and below. And so we'll start with more labels here. So put a label in here. And this will be title. And then we'll add another label below it. Add it again. Oh, you see within the group. There. This will be speaker. Maybe change the color. Let's go neon green. And we'll add another group for from and to. So the first label will be from. Second label will be two. And this will be our table. All right, so this will be it for our story, but we're gonna come back and connect things up once we create some objects that we need. Uh, but for now, we're gonna leave it and we're gonna add something new here. So. We're going to do is add new item. So new file, watch OS, watch kit class. And I'm going to say NS object. And I'll call this program object. Language is Swift. And we'll give it a home. All right, we'll just drag it closer to the other files there. And inside of this, we're going to create a custom object that'll have basically items we put into our our uh, our interface control uh, controller on the storyboard. So we'll start with var title, which will be a string. Var speaker, which will be a string as well, and then we have var from which will be a date, var2, which will be a date as well. And if you want to be thorough, you could say var details, which could be a string as well, but that could be for future expansion if you want to expand upon it and have details, maybe have a little pop-up come up or just have a sub page or something. All right, create a little uh, constructor. So we'll say func init with data and we'll pass in title being string and speaker being a string as well from is a date to is a date as well and details is string All right, so let's save that data. So we're gonna say self.title equals title, self.speaker equals speaker. And then we'll say
self dot from equals from to details. <clears throat> and of course, we don't need semicolons. So we'll take those away. And that'll be it for our program object object. So I'm going to save that and add a new item. So we'll say new file. And this will be a watch kit class. And this will be a custom object for our, our table table cell that is. So I'm going to call it prog row controller, also be an S object and of language Swift. And give it a home. And so what we'll do here is we'll just create our IB outlets for those items that we just created in our, our prog program object. So we'll say at IB outlet and we'll say var LBL title which will extend a WK interface label. IB outlet var LBL speaker extends WK interface label. From So basically, they're all labels. Var LBL2, okay, interface label. All right, and that's it for our prog row controller. Now the next step is to move over to extension delegate and actually initialize our data. So inside application did finish launching for extension delegate, we're going to create an array of program objects and just hard code the information that we have. And we're going to do something a little bit special. We're going to basically change the from and to time to be always be like 90 minutes from now. So every time you load this app, it'll always be like 90 minutes from now. Uh, we're going to have this, this uh, session up here. And that's only for us. So of course, obviously, when you create a real conference app, you're going to essentially hard code the proper information or upload the proper information for those particular sessions. You're not going to have a never ending conference. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a var call it programs extends an array of program objects and let it equal to an empty array. And then inside to finish launching. First we'll say let prog object or obj equal program object. All right, just to initialize it there. And then what we're going to do is, like I was saying earlier, we're going to set up our time to be 90 minutes from now. So we're going to say let calendar equal calendar with this capital C though. Dot current. Then we're going to set the start time to be so let start one equal calendar dot date by adding by adding dot minute And we have to add in one more, so value 90 to date. As date. And we've got an error, we're missing one bracket. There. 
So now we have two unused items, and we're going to create an end one. So say let end one equal start one dot adding time interval, and we'll add 60 minutes. So we'll say 60 times 60, because input is seconds. We'll say as date. Then we'll say prog object dot init with data, and we'll say we'll hard code far and away again with speaker being our very own Jim Kirk, and we'll say the date will be start one to end one details. We'll just say TBD. And we'll say programs dot insert. We'll say prog obj at zero. That's our first item. Now, well, now the nice thing about setting up the calendar to be 90 minutes from now is that start two and end two for the next session will just be another another 30 minutes later, another hour and a half later or so. And so here's what we're going to do. We're going to say let start to equal end one. So 30 minutes after the end time of the previous session. So end one dot adding time interval of 30 minutes. But you have to do 30 times 60 because it's in seconds. And then let end two equal start to dot adding time interval of 60 by 60, so another hour top of that. And knowing that, now we can go ahead and create prog2. So say let prog2, prog obj2, equal program object. And then prog obj2 dot init with data. And we'll say that slow and steady will be sp talked about by Mr. Spock. From start to to end to. And we'll say details will be TBD. And then finally, programs.insert for prog obj2 at 1. All right, so we'll do it for two more. So let start 3 equal end 2 dot adding time interval of 30 minutes after the end time of the previous session, so 30 times 60. Let end 3 will be an hour, so start 3 dot adding time interval, adding an hour after the start time, so 60 times 60. And then let prog obj3 equal program object and prog obj3 dot init with data passing in. Now this time we'll have Mr. Scott tell us about old and boring stuff. So old and boring by Mr. Scott from start 3 to end 3 TBD. And we'll say programs dot insert and we'll say prog obj3 at 2 
finally, one more item. So let start to four equal end three dot adding time interval 30 minutes after the last end time. Let end three, sorry, end four equal end, th uh, end, sorry. Start four dot adding time interval of 60 minutes. Now we'll initialize our final prog object. So let prog obj4 equal program object. And we'll say prog obj4 dot init with data four, and we'll say oh, typo. course typo above. There. And finally, we'll say that Uhura is going to speak about a topic called Why Me? Why Me? By Uhura from start 4 to end 4 details TBD. And finally, programs.insert of prog obj4 at index 3. All right, so now that we have our, uh, our items initialized and ready to go, let's finish off the table on the, on the watch side of things, and then that way we can focus on the complication so that we have the data concurrent and we can see the data there. We can switch to our watch face and make sure the data is consistent. So now that we have this, we're gonna switch back to our interface controller. So with interface controller, everything's already pre-populated. This interface controller is, control is already tied into the home page of our, of our uh, watch on the interface storyboard. So now we're going to configure everything up so we can connect everything up here. But to do that, our first step is interface controller we're going to define a little watch variable. Oh, sorry, a table variable. So we're going to say IB outlet, and we'll call it var, call it prog table, extends a WK interface table. And for seasoned iOS iPhone app developers out there, you know, this might be a bit out of the ordinary compared to just having to jump in and connect things up on the iPhone side of things. We're going to create a variable here and connect it up. So now we have this variable here. Now we can switch back to our interface storyboard and now we can connect, start connecting things up. So first thing we're gonna do is take our table, our generic table, and we're going to subclass that to our, or actually, sorry, we're gonna connect things up. So actually clicking on interface controller, we have our little prog table here. We're gonna connect this prog table over to table. Oops, missed it. Try again. There we go, and we now have prog table. Now, for our table controller, table row controller just below it, highlighting that, we're gonna subclass this to be our prog row controller object. There we go. And now that we have that, we can switch over to our connections inspector. We have LBL from speaker, title, and two. We can connect those guys up. So from speaker, title, and two. All right, so now that everything's all connected up, we're gonna move over to, we're gonna move back to our, our interface controller and we are going to populate the table based on our data. 
So now, back in interface controller, let's make some room. Inside will activate. All right, so we'll activate, make some space there. First thing to do, let's let's get a copy of our extension delegate. So we're going to say let my delegate equal wk extension dot shared dot delegate. Now this might look familiar to some of you, might not, but essentially we put our array inside the extension delegate. Now for the iPhone side of you, you, like you can translate that into app delegate. So we basically have saved our data inside the app delegate, but we call it extension delegate here. So we want access to it. And remember that the extension delegate, like the app delegate, is a singleton class, meaning it's instantiated once and ever once, and only once, and never again. You're not allowed to reinstantiate this. So what you do is uh, you request access to the only copy available of the extension delegate, just like we did for our, our previous apps for the app delegate. And in this case now, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to request access and then get access to the to the array of program objects. So we'll say, to finish this off, we'll say as extension delegate. Now, first thing we'll do is we'll set the number of rows in our table. So we'll say self.prog table dot set number of rows to my delegate dot programs dot count. We don't need the remaining stuff. Actually, we do. So with row type, prog row controller, prog row controller. Now, for the iPhone and you, you're, if you if you think back to tables that we created, we created a cell identifier. So this is our cell identifier. Now, what we didn't do yet is we have to actually populate the cell identifier in our interface storyboard. So we'll do that right now. So switching back to interface storyboard and prog row controller is highlighted. So under identifier, we're going to put prog row controller. And we're going to deactivate selectable because I don't, I want to keep this as a very generic table. We're not going to click it to do something. Uh, we'll just leave it as is, just to, just to view data. But of course, you can leave it selected if you want to expand on it further. So moving back to our code inside our interface controller. Let's finish off our will activate method. So we set the number of rows. Now we got to populate each row. We're going to use our date object, in fact, particular date formatter object to convert from date to string. So we'll say let date formatter equal date formatter. We'll say date formatter dot date format equals, we'll say hour colon minute. And then we're going to loop through and basically populate the table. So we'll say for, we we'll use a tuple, so index comma prog in my delegate dot programs dot enumerated. All right, we'll say let row equal self dot prog table dot row controller at index as prog row controller. All right, so we're gonna get it, we're gonna grab a row at each index. 
make some space to push up a bit higher. There. So we grab a row. And then we're going to populate that row. So we'll say row.lbl title is equal to, or sorry, dot set text is of prog.title row.lbl speaker dot set text is prog dot speaker row dot lbl from dot set text now we're going to leave it like that for a sec because we have to do something here and in fact i'll do row dot lbl2 dot set text and we'll do the same thing and we're gonna do something a bit special here so we're gonna say let time string equal now we're gonna take our from and convert it from an, a date object to a string object so we're gonna say date formatter dot string from and then prog dot from exclamation mark let time string two equal date formatter dot string and from this will be my delegate dot programs of index. dot two exclamation now you're probably wondering why I did the two a bit differently and that's just to illustrate to you the difference between looping through this for loop versus just grabbing the data directly from the, the delegate so this is really is, all this has to be is prog dot two and that would have been good enough so I could have put prog dot two here but just to illustrate that, hey, I could still re retrieve from the uh, from the extension delegate if I wanted to. So that's the only reason for it. But either way, you're going to get the data that you need. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to set our, our information for the last two labels. So that'll just be time string. But we're going to do something a bit different for the two. We're going to put a little hyphen. So we'll say hyphen and then slash and in round brackets time string two. And that's it. Now we can give it a run. So watch complication, change the target to be W9 watch kit app. We'll say iPhone 7 plus watch series 2. I'm going to say 42 millimeters since I already have that open and hit run. And as you can see, it's loaded up and we have our schedule here.